Hi everyone, I am Milan again, and I'm checking in again at an unusual time. I hope that I'm not messing up your like learning schedule, but anyways, here I am. And for today, I didn't bring, bring any colorful, beautiful, interesting maps at all. Moreover, this is going to be probably one of the most painful and boring topics I covered here on my channel, which, well, I'm sure that it made you curious and excited enough to like keep watching this video. But if you are still here, then uh, make no mistake, this is, while it's very boring, it's also very crucial because today we are going to learn about setting up our Python environment for geospatial analytics. So, without further ado, let me just zoom in with this new function of my recording software I just discovered. So, here I am. I should be in this small circle now, totally zoomed in. So, the way I usually do this setup goes back to the library called OSMRX, which stands for OpenStreetMap NetworkX, which means that it is a combination of OpenStreetMap, the public data source, and NetworkX, this really cool library for network analytics. And we should be grateful to Jeff Green for this really, here he is, Jeff Green, this really cool library. So, I usually use this as kind of my seed for the environment I use. And to set up, we will need a terminal. In Linux and Mac, we can search for it very quickly. And on Windows, you can find it under the name called command line. They are very similar looking stuff. This is very old school screen. And here we can type all sorts of comments that we want to put. So um, what should we do? So we should use this contact create command to create a new virtual Python environment. It's kind of a separate part of the computer where all the things that are linked to this certain environment are installed. So this way we can have multiple Python and library versions, different copies separated from each other with all their dependencies around. So let's get started. We will, and I'm just taking my, checking my notes up there. So we will use the contact create command with the minus n switch, we can specify the name of the environment. Let's call it geo. And let's see. And just copy the rest. And here I see from the forge. Yes, so here I also added Jupyter, so it will hopefully install OSMNX, all these dependencies like GeoPandas or PyProj, and also install the Jupyter Notebook environment. So let's hit enter and start creating. This might take a little while depending on, on your computer and also like in the part of the day and you know the stars constellation, so maybe Okay, I keep commenting it, and if it gets very slow, then I just go out for a coffee and stop the video. Okay, so great. It seems that we are going to be installing loads of stuff here, so let's just say yes, why, proceed. And now the execution is in progress. After that, we will activate this environment and check the Python version that's installed behind the scenes, which should be the latest version. I think it's Python 3.12. So once this is done, okay, it's actually done. So that was pretty quick. No time for coffee. What a, what a shame. Anyway, so now we can activate the environment so that we can start using it with the command called conda activate and the name of the workspace. And finally just check the version of the Python we installed here, which we can quickly check that it's indeed 3.12.4. So I've actually been using an older one, 3.8 for, for years, but now I had to realize that I have to move on and live in, at least in the present, but certainly not in the distant past. So now I'm moving to this version slowly. So now we have this new environment. 
So what do we do now? The way I usually work is that I use the Anaconda Navigator, um, which you can install for any operation system you have from this website. And I've already it installed and I didn't uninstall it to show you how to install because that might break many things. So let me know if you can install it from this link following this, these steps here. And if there are any issues, just drop a comment and I can actually do a video about installing it. So now let's assume that we installed it and opened it. Voila, here it is. So once we open the navigator, it will look like this. And here on the left side, we can select the environments and let's pick Geo, which is our freshly installed environment. It takes a while to switch there, but maybe this will be the time for my coffee. Yeah, here you can see my other environments. Test Geo 4. Yes, I had like a couple of other test environments before, but sometimes it works to clean it up. But here we are again, no coffee, but we have a nice environment. So thanks to the installation of the Jupyter Notebook, after clicking on this arrow here, we can open this with a Jupyter Notebook, which will open a browsing, a browser tab, either on this or the other screen I am using. Okay, now waiting for the magic to happen. It happens especially when an environment is freshly installed that it's opening slowly. But here it is. Here you will have a nice file browser which shows you all the stuff I have on my computer, which is not really for the show now. So I just create a new um, notebook. It's not the first time. <laughs> embarrassing enough, but here, every time I open something, I end up doing a new notebook, which is saved as untitled a number, ipi and So now I will use this one and call it test setup and show you a few things on how I usually get setting up or starting things. First, let's import or summon apps call it OS if that's the usual stuff. And you may notice that OSMNX is not like the number one geospatial Python library, but again, I have found it very useful and very like handy to start the installation with it because uh, Mr. Brink has done a lot of heavy lifting by packaging all the dependencies together. So once OSMNX is running, in my experience, we are usually pretty good to go. However, since now we are importing it for the first time, now it's probably setting up all sorts of dependency stuff in the background. But in the meantime, I can start typing. And the first thing I do is a little unorthodox, but so far has been working fine with me, is to actually down downgrade the GeoPandas because GeoPandas in the OSMNX installation comes in the latest version, which is 1.0.1, if I'm correct. However, I still have all my code and my life's work in older GeoPandas versions. So without breaking everything, the only workaround I found is to first downgrade GeoPandas and probably during my summer break or something, I will start to migrate my code to this latest version. But for the time being, I will go for this version. And I hope you won't judge me for that too much. And see, it's successfully installed. We can import it and check the version. Okay, not okay. This is not the version I'm looking for. So what we have to do is to restart the kernel, import it again, play, and check the version. Okay, now we are good to go. Also here, I didn't explain, but you might have noticed, and I'm explaining it now, that we can install packages to our environment directly in the 
in the IFIML group, which is something I usually uh, very often do because it's like very comfortable. So that's how we can add library. We can also test like built-in libraries and import them to NumPy random map time. These are already built in to our environment. But we can also start installing other libraries that we might use for geospatial analytics using this very same command. We don't need to specify the versions if we don't want to. For instance, we can install, I don't know, R3. Or not R3. Ah, yeah, we need to import system first. If you want to visualize some three-dimensional data, then you might need PyDAC. If you want to do geocoding, then GeoPy will be a good choice. For interactive visualization, this comes Polium. Weird thing that, that I've experienced is that this Folium, in Folium, First, we have to import Folium and then check the version. And in the previous versions, it said that it has an unknown version. So this is the first time in my life I see a version coming out of Folium. So this was like a very happy moment. Yeah, but basically it's it. We can use these comments to install all libraries we want. We can, you know, specify the libraries, even specify the versions, whatever we want to specify here, and then we can import them and start using them. So um, that's it very much. That's all I wanted to tell you. So if I would like would uh, be about to install or set up a new environment for my geospatial work, then these would be the steps I would mostly follow. However, this can still cause some unexpected errors and troubles and issues, depending on the versions you're trying to use. So make sure that all the versions you are using are compatible with each other. And if you have any questions or get stuck somewhere here, then just let me know or leave a comment. And that was it for today. So thanks again for joining. And also stay alert because this poster here is not a joke. It's something very serious coming out very, very soon. And I will tell you about that later very soon as well. So thanks again for watching. Have a great day.